Hello everyone, Kevin Grigley here with Tech Formality, the blog that focuses on tech guides, news, and reviews. Uh, go ahead and check it out at techformality.com. And today we're going to be taking a look at Avast Premium Security. Uh, that is Avast Second Tier. Uh, the first one is the free edition, the second one is the premium, and the uh, last one is the ultimate. Um, we're going to break this video up into a few sections as always. Um, the first one will be installation of the product. The second one will be the review of the actual interface itself and all the features that are offered. And the third one will be the prevention test of the zero day malware links that I throw at this uh, security software. Uh, with that being said, I did get some news from Avast today that they are offering 50% off of their products until May 31st. Uh, so if you go ahead and check out in the description down below, um, you will see a blog post to my blog, and you can go and click on that, and in that link will be special links to get this pricing. So if you want to go, go ahead and purchase Avast, go ahead and check out that link. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we are. We're going to go ahead and get started with first reviewing the features that are included in each platform of the Avast um, security solution. So as we have uh, in the first column here, the free antivirus. Anybody can download this. It's free for use. Um, I have already done a review on that, so if you wanted to check that out, I will go ahead and link that video somewhere on this screen and you can go and click on that and check that out if you are interested in that. Um, so the free edition blocks viruses and malware. Um, it's got some shields on it so it does um, detect viruses, ransomware, and other threats in real time. Um, it scans for Wi-Fi security weaknesses and it also provides an extra layer of ransomware security uh, so you can actually protect uh, personal photos, files, and um, other documents from being encrypted by hackers and that's um, an added feature also in the free edition as I said so you can actually um, specify which files are most important to you to prevent them from being um, compromised from the ransomware attacks if you ever are a victim of one. Um, and then the premium security now um, it offers all three of those in addition to um, avoiding fake sites for safer shopping so it's a phishing protection um, it stops criminals from stealing your uh, passwords and bank information so basically it's a, a web filter for phishing websites uh, that also protects you in your email whenever you get those spam emails um, you will see that this will take effect on that as well uh, safely running suspicious apps um, there is a sandbox included on the premium security. Um, so basically there's a uh, virtual sandbox inside of your computer that will run um, with a vast. So these um, applications cannot harm or affect your computer in any way as they are somewhat quarantined to that sandbox only. Um, so <clears throat> it will actually run the application in the sandbox and then confirm it's safe and then it will allow allow it to run your, on your computer depending on the results of that. Um, there is an advanced firewall that's included with the premium security edition um, and it keeps hackers from sneaking onto your PC and stealing your data. Um, there is a Windows firewall built into every Windows operating system however it's not nearly as advanced as the premium security or as a security um, platforms firewall. They do have heuristics and different things like that built into it so that you can not have to worry about getting attacked or getting hijacked or anything like that. So it does come with the firewall. Um, stops webcam spying. So it does have a feature to uh, prevent people from hacking into your webcam. So it does block that, um, which is a benefit. I know a lot of people that always um, are weary about their webcams or they tape something over it because they're concerned somebody might be watching them. Um, so it does have that webcam shield, which is a very good feature to have. Um, permanently shred sensitive files, so it does have a file shredder built into it. Um, you can do that instead of deleting a file, which is still on your hard drive somewhat. It would actually write over the, the drive and completely erase that file. Um, automatic updates are uh, provided with premium security as well. And that's all the features of this version we're going to be reviewing. Um, if you are um, and if you look to the right here, you can see premium security. This is a multi-device. The left one is a single device. So the only difference is you get to install it on 10 devices, I believe it is, versus one. And there is a price difference for that. Um, 
So that's not really a big deal if you're just trying to use it for one computer. If not, you can always purchase that license. I think it's a $10 difference if you wanted to have additional computers as well. Um, then the Ultimate package, um, it comes with everything that I had already covered. Um, and it is for one device, but it does include the Avast Cleanup Premium, which removes hidden files, um, frees up disk space, and speeds up your computer. So it's more like a CCleaner product where it actually goes through and cleans up the temporary files and internet files and things like that. So it is a, um, a benefit to have this built into your antivirus as well. Um, it includes a uh, secure line VPN. So it actually provides a VPN connection um, so you can browse the internet safely and uh, everything that you are browsing and viewing is encrypted so you don't have to worry about anything getting hijacked or attacked that way. Um, that also includes a vast anti-track which um, disguises your digital fingerprint to avoid personalized ads. So I don't know if you've ever been on a website where you've got an ad for the town that you're in. Um, so it's It's basically an ad that works off of your IP address so it can actually see what your IP address is and basically just put fake ads around your screen to, to make it look like these are real ads in the area. However, that is a, um, a good feature also to include on uh, an antivirus of the uh, vast anti-track there. Um, and then we'll jump right over to the product um, specifications and the requirements for uh, the minimum. They are requiring Windows 10, uh, 32 or 64 bit except for mobile and um, IoT edition. So you will want to have a Windows 10 operating system or Windows 8.1 uh, or Windows 8 32 or 64 bit. Um, and that does not include the RT or starter edition. And then also uh, you can have a Windows 7 service pack two or later, and that would be uh, 32 or 64 bit. And Windows is fully compatible with um, an Intel processor or AMD Anthlon 64. Um, so they're recommending the Intel Pentium 4 um, if you have something as, as old as that or you can get something, um, anything newer than that. That's just a minimum spec. One gig of RAM, two gigs of hard drive space, an internet connection to download, activate, and maintain application updates and antivirus database, and then the opt, um, optimally standard screen resolution no less than 1024 by 768. Um, so that's basically all the product specs and um, features that are included with the product. So let's go ahead and start running the installer and jump right into that so we can see what we got. Uh, so whenever you do run this application, uh, this is just a trial version. So you would, um, if you would go to purchase it, you can actually, like I said, go to the blog and get that special discount pricing there uh, that's offered. And um, we'll go ahead and get through this installation here. So we will go ahead and pause for a second until this loads up and then we will be back in one second. Or actually it's back up now. So uh, the screen actually comes up with a vast premium security. If you did get the ultimate bundle it would have that listed there. Um, you can customize as in my free edition I showed that you can add or remove any of these features. We're going to just go ahead and start with the recommended protection and hit install. And then as this runs I will go ahead and pause until the um, actual interface comes up and then we can go through the settings there. Okay, so here we are to the main screen. Um, and also I wanted to point out that the Avast installer is actually uh, 215 kilobytes, so it is a micro installer. Uh, basically whenever you run it, it downloads every file that you would need for the program, so you don't have to actually download a huge installer at first, it will download as it's installing. Um, so whenever we are done installing, we are prompted with this screen, you're protected. Um, and then this is basically the same display as the free edition. Um, so now it's asking how do we like to continue activate or start the free trial. And we're going to go ahead and start the free trial. And then it's auto, uh, automatically wanted me to run a first time scan. So we'll go ahead and click on that and let this scan run. It will do a uh, smart scan. So it will scan your processes. Um, it will scan um, pretty much anything on the computer, any browser threats, outdated apps, viruses, malware, advanced issues. Um, and then you can see down here in the bottom right, we now have connected to a new network. Um, choose which type of network this is for maximum firewall security, then scan for threats. Um, so do we want to do public network or private network, depending on what your situation is? I am on a private network, so I will go ahead and hit scan network as this um, scan loads up here. And as you can see, this um, 
completed here and it shows that we are good for browser threats, outdated apps are good, viruses and malware are good, and advanced issues um, it shows we are protected on this front. So ransomware shield is activated in, a, in addition to the three sensitive items um, such that is what is protected. Um, advanced firewalls keeping hackers off your PC. Real site is protecting you from fake websites. So next. And we can actually schedule a smart scan to run once a month. Um, I would recommend turning that on so that you don't forget. Um, and then now this is basically some information so it's you're not imagining it your PC is getting slower um, it just basically explains um, if we click on show me it will actually pull up um, get a faster PC with a vast cleanup premium so they are trying to sell you this platform um, and they're showing you a two-year subscription as a dollar eighty nine a month for forty two or forty five dollars annually um, so basically it's they're just trying to sell you another product I'm going to head and go ahead and get out of here and hit ignore and now we are onto the main screen here of the Avast premium security interface. So everything like here um, is set up basically similar to the free edition. Um, the status screen is the same. We can run a smart scan from it. Um, we can actually add an extra 60 days to our free trial if we wanted to. Um, we can extend that now for free. Um, protection. These are all of the um, items that I have gone over in um, the free edition as well. So basically virus scans will allow you to do a full scan, targeted scan, boot scan, custom scan. If we go into custom scan, we can create a new scan. Basically um, have uh, an option to modify any of these settings. So we can set up a name, full virus scan, targeted scan, quick scan, smart scan. Frequency, you can set it once, daily, weekly, monthly. Advanced settings, you can turn up or down the sensitivity. Scan for potentially unwanted programs. Scan for tools. Follow links during scans. Test whole files. Uh, very slow for big files. Scan priority, high priority, medium, low. Scan areas, all hard disks. So any uh, disk that you have on your computer, uh, you can just scan the system drive if you wanted to set that up. All removal media, root kits it scans for. UEFI, BIOS, CD-ROMs, and DVD drives. You can enable all this if you would like. Um, startup programs and modules loaded in memory. Scanners only common install or scans only common installers. You can actually have it scan all archives, including 7-zip, RAR, zip installers, etc. Results in slower scanning, and that's because it has to scan through every single archive and file on your computer. If you wanted to enable that, you could. Uh, we're going to keep it with the recommended. Um, Content-based types slow. Um, or name extensions uh, based types. So it's basically scanning the common file um, types that viruses can be obtained on, such as an exe.com.bat. Um, I would recommend keeping it on the content based. And then you can perform actions during this scan. You can fix them automatically. You can move it to the virus chest or delete the file. Uh, shut down the computer after the scan finishes. And you can also generate a report to see uh, basically what the scan has uh, come up with after it finishes. So back here to the main screen, a boot scan is a scan that will run when you start your computer up. Um, it's a, an operating system boot, so it will scan all your files before any applications have the opportunity to run. Um, targeted scan, you can specify folders or external drives, and then full scan is clearly a full scan of your entire computer. Um, so back to protection. Um, that was the virus scans core shields. These are all the shields that are on your computer. File shield, behavior shield, web shield, and mail shield. Um, each of these have its own feature. So the mail shield blocks dangerous email attachments, while the web shield blocks web attacks and unsafe downloads. Behavior shield warns you if any applications behave suspiciously. And then the file shield scans any file added to or open from your PC. And by default, these are all turned on. You can turn them off if you would wish uh, for any reason. The virus chest um, detected threats are safely locked away here. So this is a quarantine box. Um, this is where basically anything is uh, quarantined once you have a threat. It will actually be moved here directly. It's not deleted from your computer, but it is safely quarantined, so it cannot harm anything else uh, on your computer, such as any other files or applications. The Wi-Fi inspector. Um, scans for vulnerabilities and potential strangers piggybacking on your network. 
I am actually hardwired, so I do not have the ability to do this, and this is a virtual machine, so it does not have a Wi-Fi connection or a wireless NIC installed on it, so it is not capable of performing uh, wireless capabilities. But you would just click Scan Network, and it would scan your entire network to see who's all connected on it, and then you can actually click Show Last Result to, to see your previous scans. Remote access, remote access Shield is the uh, shield that stops hackers from using your PC's remote desktop function against you. Um, so a lot of the um, uh, tech support scams that happen, um, for I know the elderly people, a lot of them fall for it. Um, they're contacted via phone or email stating that they have a virus on their computer. Um, I actually wrote a blog post about this explaining everything on how it works. Um, and then they click on the link and then the um, hackers actually can get into their computer through remote desktop if it is enabled and if it's not they actually walk them through how to enable it to get connected to their computers so this shield actually uh, prevents things such as that happening by um, you know going on and disabling the remote access for the computer um, and it can actually let you control who connects and who does not connect so this does that feature for you which is good um, the sandbox it's actually, um, like I said, the sandbox is a virtual sandbox in your computer, and it is basically like a quarantine box that allows you to run applications only in the sandbox and not outside. Um, so the definition here is don't trust an app, safely run it in this isolated environment to make sure it won't wreck, uh, wreak havoc on your computer. So you can run, this, run an app in the sandbox. Whenever you open up the app, it will only run inside of the sandbox and not on, side of your, on the uh, side of your computer. And you have the ability to move that then to the computer after you test it and ensure it is a safe, um, safe piece of, uh, or not, not a safe piece of malware, but a safe application, I'm trying to say. Uh, the firewall will keep hackers out. So you can actually go ahead and um, turn off your firewall if you wished. Uh, you can set it to private or public network. You can check your firewall logs, settings. Um, you can go into settings here and change any of these settings for the firewall. Uh, we're not going to get into those right now. Uh, and then you can actually see apps recently managed by your firewall. So a uh, vast antivirus system, host processes, device uh, association framework, search, and uh, local security. These are all Windows processes, so everything looks good there. Um, to the real site. Uh, this is the real site protection, stops hackers from hijacking your DNS settings and redirecting your fake websites to steal your passwords and banking info. This happens quite frequently on um, phishing websites. It can also happen through spyware or uh, through adware. Um, a lot of times your DNS servers get changed and you don't know it and you go to google.com and it actually redirects you to a website that looks like Google and it asks you to log into your Gmail account and then you do and by mistake you logged into a uh, phishing website and therefore they have your username and password so uh, this is a protection against that um, and then the ransomware shield is the last item that is included in the shield um, the ransomware shield stops ransomware and trusted, untrusted apps from changing, deleting, or holding your personal photos and files hostage. So whenever a ransomware attack happens, these three folders here, documents, pictures, and desktops, are considered the most important. So it will make sure to um, prevent these from being encrypted um, by an algorithm that is built into this ransomware shield. Um, you can actually click protect, protect a new folder, and if you wanted this folder to be protected, you just click OK, and it will go ahead and add that folder onto the protection list. To remove, you just click Stop Protecting, and it will remove that item from the list. Next up, we have Privacy. Um, so these are some new features that are added from the free version to the advanced version. Um, web browsers are not vaults, and any passwords stored are uh, vulnerable to theft. So anytime you click save password on a website, um, anybody can basically see that. If they, if a hacker gets into your computer, they can actually download that data and have access to all of your passwords. Um, we prevent both malware and unwanted apps from accessing your browser or pa browser passwords until you decide what's allowed. So this is a protection field for passwords that are stored within the browser. Here's the data shredder. Um, so here you can actually select files to shred. Um, you can shred your entire drive if you wish to do that. And you can also delete files um, individually. 
hack alerts, monitors. So basically, this is like a credit monitoring. Um, creator sign into your Avast account to have all your counseling together in your email. Monitor 24 7. Um, we'll alert you if any passwords are leaked online. So this is like a black web or dark web um, filter. So this is a good feature to have that if you're, um, and basically this explains it down below, website that you use gets hacked, hackers share your email and password online, we spot the link and warn, your leak and warn you. So whenever you have a same password used on a website and that password is um, hacked and sold on the black market, um, which is known as the dark web, it will actually... Um, not be good for you if you have the same password and username for a different account because then they'll have access to all of your accounts so this feature makes it easy to be proactive more than reactive um, if your password and username gets compromised and the secure line vpn stay protected on public wi-fi encrypt your internet connection and stop anyone from reading your emails and tracking websites you visit and you have to actually have to install that manually it does not come with the application so you can install the vpn um, webcam shield is turned on by default, prevents hackers and untrusted ass from hijacking your webcam to spy on you. Um, I know, like I said, a lot of people are concerned about their webcams, so that is a good feature that was implemented there. Antitrack Premium, get advertisers off your back, disguise your online identity for greater privacy. So this, like I said, would use your IP address to get the, um, you know, get your area's uh, advertisers or advertisements that are out there it would show on websites that you visit through tracking so this would actually prevent that from happening so you wouldn't have to worry about anything uh, whenever you are browsing the web sensitive data shield is the last one here and this protects documents that contain your banking info passwords id social security numbers pay slips and other sensitive information and you can actually scan these um, items from your computer uh, so if you had a banking um, application or something like that with your social security number on it you can actually scan and this, this will protect that document from being hijacked or stolen and then we have performance cleanup premium this is actually the c cleaner that i was explaining quickly boost pc performance um, free up disk space and fix any annoying problems so you can scan now and it will tell you what is um, if there's temporary files if there's internet files, if there's tracking files, tracking cookies, whatever it may be, it will tell you that information and it will clean them up for you automatically. And as I said, this is more like a CCleaner product, but it is built right into the Avast Premium Security platform, so you can just get it straight from there. Drive Updater. Um, this actually reduces PC crashes by updating your old and broken drivers, so you can install this now. This is an additional feature, but it is included in the platform. Do Not Disturb Mode. Disables all notifications. Software updater, um, you can check for updates. It will actually uh, show all of your applications here. So I have 7-Zip installed. It shows your current version. If there was a new version, it would prompt you and it would actually install directly from here. So you don't have to go out and about and find all of your programs to reinstall the latest versions. Um, with that being said, that is everything that we went through here. And now there are settings. Um, if you go ahead and go up to the menu, you can click on settings here. And I'm not going to go through these settings because this is basically self-explanatory here. You can change all these settings or applications uh, features if you wish. Um, you can go into the shields, modify data there, modify data on the room and access. Um, we're just going to leave everything on default now to test with the default settings right out of the box. Um, and then you can go through and, and review all those settings if you wish. Um, and then we can also see over here you can install all these products if they are included in the platform. Um, you can view statistics of your computer, your subscriptions, your activation code. If you had actually purchased it after the trial run, um, you can go ahead and enter your key up there. And then notifications will show here if there are any notifications to show you. Um, with that being said, we are going to go ahead and take a look really quick at the task manager and view the performance here. So as you can see, there are a few different Avast tasks that are running. Uh, let's filter here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different um, tasks that are running through Avast. Um, one's for the engineer server, one's for the firewall, one's remediation. So they're all used for some different shield that's within Avast. And actually, 
we're looking at about 30, 50, 60, 70, 80, uh, about 120 or so on the um, megabytes for RAM. So you're about 120, which is not very high, and 0% CPU usage. Whenever you're scanning, these numbers will go up. So just using the application as it is uh, in an idle state, it doesn't look too bad. So now we are going to go ahead and get into the prevention test, and we will go ahead and pause for a second and be right back. Okay, we are back, and I just wanted to let you know really quick that the sale that's going on, the 50% off, the original sale price on um, a vast security premium or premium security is $69.99, and the sale price that's listed on my blog post is actually $34.99 for the first year. Uh, the ultimate um, original pricing is $99.99 a year. So you're looking at $100, and the discounted price is $49.99. So if you are interested, please go over to my blog and check that out and get those special pricing um, that are available, like I said, until May 31st. So you have a little time to go ahead and act on that and get those prices. So opening up Chrome for the first time, we are um, greeted with this um, the Chrome Web Store. It's trying to get us to install this uh, browser plugin through Avast, the extension. So we're going to go ahead and click Add to Chrome and Add Extension. And this is just a, another layer of added security. So as you can see, we will pin this down here. And as you go on and about to websites, you will see on the right side that there are different settings um, or ratings, I should say, um, I'm known site. So as you go to sites, there's other people that can trust or not trust uh, websites, and it shows you your trackers also that were blocked as well. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started on the prevention test. Now I do have some links here that are zero day malware. Um, in addition, I do have some malware samples in this folder um, that I have downloaded also. So we will go ahead and go through all these and see how Avast reacts to the links that are thrown at it. So here we go with the first one. That was the first one that was uh, actually blocked. We've actually uh, got a pop-up from Avast, threat secured. We safely aborted connection on Rentry.co because it was infected with URL botnet and scan your PC for other issues too. You have the ability to scan, see details, and it shows you the details here. Was detected by the web shield, shows you the process of being Chrome, the threat name, and connection was aborted. So you can go ahead and scan if you want. We will go ahead and skip that since we are going through this test. So the first one was blocked. We will go through the next one here. That one's dead. Moving on, there was a file that was downloaded, and uh, we've a safely aborted connection on files. This website because it was infected by ELF, and there's some kind of threat there, which was a Trojan. Uh, if you go ahead and click more, Trojan um, pretends to be something else a picture, document, or other file, trick you into running it, infecting your computer. Um, shows you the web shield was detected by or detected by the web shield connection was aborted so that one was blocked as well we're going to try running these these are dot sh so these are shells for linux i don't know if they will let us download yeah so it does actually block it as well um, so as you can see there was a connection aborted um, same from the web shield so web shield is doing a good job here at protecting us against these links Try the next one here. Same thing here, blocked. We'll go ahead and here. This is a .jpg, and that was a block as well. We safely aborted the connection. Um, this was also a Trojan, um, and that was the web shield as well. So pretty much everything is making its way, um, not even past the web shield. So that's good to know that the web shield is doing a good job on that uh, same thing here a dropper threat can secretly install their applications on your computer so our connection was aborted there with the web shield um, so that's a good job once again for the web shield uh, we'll go and try this one it's a dot text file And 
and that was actually a text file on the web. Whenever you open it, it tries to, uh, um, let's see here, it's a Trojan, so it does try to download files on your computer, um, and that is a web shell block as well, so that's good. And we will go ahead and mark that as a block. And here's one more um, .sh, which is an install. Let's go ahead and scan that for viruses and see. No issues were found. Okay, so that one didn't find anything on that install. Um, and we will actually try to... I don't know if we can get into it or not. Um, let's try to open it with Notepad. So nothing was found on this one. Um, I'm not even sure if it is a... Um, virus or not it could be a false positive so we'll go ahead and mark this as unknown and see what the other um, antiviruses have to say about that uh, so we will go ahead and go into these malware samples really quickly and start extracting them um, let's go ahead and extract two so that was also a threat um, in your virus chest it was quarantined and it shows that it was a Trojan, so it was blocked by the file shield. And the file shield actually um, goes on to scanning your files or reviews them as they're open. So this was a quarantine as well. And here's your virus chest I was telling you about. This is a quarantine box, so they, it is safe in there. And I uh, cannot do any other harm to your computer. So we will go ahead and do malware sample 1. Blocked. And let's go ahead and run the next one here and see what happens. Server.bin. That one was blocked as well. Um, Server.bin in your virus chest because it's infected with malware. That was a Trojan and it was moved to the virus chest as well. So that's a quarantine. So we'll go ahead and mark that as blocked. And the final one we have UC. Um, it's in an archive here. Let's go ahead and extract. And we'll go ahead and run a scan here and see. So it does not show anything on this one. Um, we'll go ahead and submit these really quickly to Virus Total to see what the results are from the other antiviruses out there. Uh, so that was desktop samples you see. And this could be a false positive as well. Nothing has detected it, so we will go ahead and mark that as a false positive. And I will go ahead and go into the one that was downloaded. Um, Install.panel and see what that comes up as. And that one was also a false positive, has not been detected by any of the antiviruses yet. So we'll go ahead and mark that as a false positive as well. So with that being said, it does look like Avast did a phenomenal job on the blocking of the malicious URLs and the malware samples that we had um, with both the web, web shield and the file shield. Um, so this will be a false positive. And we will go ahead and run a full scan with Avast to see what it comes up with and see if it finds any traces of malware. So we will go ahead and run the full scan. Um, Actually, this is a, let me see here, that was a smart scan, so we will go into um, virus scans here, and we will run a full scan to scan the entire PC. As the PC is scanning, we will take a look really quickly at the performance, and as you can see, there is an increase of CPU and memory usage as Avast starts to scan. Um, still not too bad, it's still under, looks to be under 120 megs, so that's good there. Uh, actually, it does look like it's a little higher up here. Um, so you're about 200 megs or 250 megs depending on the other files down below or processes that are running. So you are a little higher on CPU uses, but you're going to have that with any antivirus that you're running. Um, no matter whenever it's scanning or not, it's always going to be a higher CPU usage. Same with updates as it's pulling the latest definitions and software updates, you're going to have a higher CPU usage. So overall, that is not a very bad thing. Um, and it is scanning the disk now, so you can see that the disk usage is a little higher as well. 
So we will go ahead and let this run a full scan and we will pause and be back here in a few minutes whenever we are completed with the scan. Alright, so we are back and the scan actually just finished. Um, I would, if I had to guess, it would, I would probably say it took about 20 minutes or so to finish, which isn't too bad. Um, and as you can see, um, Avast has found two malware threats. Um, these are two Trojans that were left over from what we had initially went through. Um, this is a cached file um, that was in app data from Google Chrome, and this one was a downloads unconfirmed download that was left over. Um, so we will go ahead and mark both of these and resolve all, and let the uh, application perform the uh, corrective actions, which was quarantining to the virus chest. So um, it did find two items, and we will go ahead and mark this as done. And we will go ahead and get into malware bytes and do a scan with malware bytes, and then we'll also run a Hitman Pro scan, and we will additionally run a Norton Power Eraser scan just to see, you know, how things are looking in all three of those aspects of those programs. So if you give me just one second, we will be back with the results of the malware byte scan and the other two applications as well. Okay, so we are back with the completed results of all three applications. Um, after them finishing their scans. Uh, the first one of Hitman Pro came back with one malware trace or identified threat, which is combo fix, and that is a false positive, so that is not an actual threat. Um, there are 74 traces of um, items, which are all tracking cookies, and as I stated, that if you do have that ultimate edition um, that includes the cleanup premium for Avast, um, that would definitely take care of these tracking cookies. Um, so that would solve that problem there. So there are no malicious software or applications installed on the computer or any type of threats that will harm the computer from Hitman Pro's perspective. Um, then over to Malwarebytes, we can see here that it completed its scan as well and zero threats, potentially unwanted programs. Um, everything is zero, so that is a good sign from the Malwarebytes perspective. And finally, the last review um, or scan that we ran was Norton Power Eraser, and it actually found no threats as well. So that is a very good job done by Avast um, and their premium solution. So just to recap, um, this is basically what we ran through, um, all of these links. Um, after coming down to it with the false positives and the dead link, we had a total of seven URLs that were able to be tested. All seven were blocked, providing a vast web filter with a 100% rating. Um, and that was all for the work of the web filter there, um, not even allowing the threats to download to get on the computer. Um, in addition, we also had those three malware files, two of which were legit. One was a false positive. Um, so that was a two for two, 100% block on the file shield um, from Avast. And uh, in addition, it found those two items after we scanned, so it did remove some malware that it found left over. So um, overall, I would give Avast a 10 out of 10 rating. It is a very good product. Um, I've always been fond of their free edition, um, and this just proves that they are stepping up their game in the security field and um, putting everything towards their uh, Premier platforms as well. So if it was up to me, I would recommend Premium security from Avast to um, anybody who asked for an antivirus uh, solution. They did a very good job with both their heur heuristics, um, their file blocking, and web blocking as well. Uh, we didn't really get into phishing links, but I would assume that they are just as good on that side of things. Um, please do visit my blog at techformality.com, and uh, as I stated, there will be a blog post um, linked in the description of this video to provide discounts to this solution and the ultimate bundle if you are wanting to purchase Avast. Be sure to do that to get the 50% off um, of the solution. And as I stated, that is running until May 31st of 21. So go ahead and take your uh, pick at which solution you want to choose and purchase from the blog post link. Um, that's going to be all for this video. Please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, to the channel. Also enable notifications for any future and upcoming videos that will be posted. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, uh, you can either comment them in the description or head over to the website, which is one more time, techformality.com. In the top right corner, there's a contact button. If you submit a form there, I will respond to you as soon as possible, or you can send me a private message over uh, the channel, uh, whichever you prefer. And with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I continue to thank you for the support that you provide to me in making these videos, and hope that you enjoy them. 
And until the next time, we will see you later.